23 days ginger glazed chicken. Season the chicken with salt and pepper. Coat the chicken with a thin layer of cornstarch. The sauce is super easy. Soy sauce, honey, grated ginger, and garlic. Mix together. Pan fry the chicken for four minutes on each side. Remove and set aside. Dissolve the sauce. Let it simmer for 30 seconds. Add back in the chicken and let it cook for another one to two minutes on each side. Look at that. Girl, you chosen. dinner series we're making creamy cajun chicken meatballs the great thing about this recipe is that you can actually meal prep the meatballs during the weekend and defrost them and cook them anytime during the week so it saves a bunch of time in that regard as well but to begin i'm just adding all of my ingredients as well as my seasonings to my ground chicken and i'm going to form my meatballs you should be able to get about 28 out of this recipe then we're going to pop them in a 400 degree oven for about 18 minutes and then get started on our sauce so when our meatballs are done our sauce should be done as well which is perfect in a saucepan with a little bit of olive oil and butter we're going to saute our onion and our garlic for about three minutes then we're going to throw in our cherry tomatoes as well as our fresh basil and cook that for about three minutes as well. Add in your chicken broth and we're going to bring that to a simmer and then we're going to pour in our heavy cream and bring that to a light bubble. Mix everything together, make sure everything is nice and incorporated and then we're going to add in our seasonings. We're adding salt, black pepper, Cajun, white pepper as well as garlic powder and onion powder. Stir it up until incorporated and then we're going to add our freshly grated parmesan and make sure that's nice and melted. Bring it to a light bubble again and we're going to add in our spinach and then once that's nice and wilted down we're going to add in our meatballs. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can serve this. I served mine on top of mashed potatoes, but you can serve it on top of rice. You can make it into a pasta or you can just serve it with a side salad if you'd like, but you're done. I love a good bowl of ramen noodles and these 20 minute Thai red curry ramen noodles with a little bit of cherry garlic oil are so delicious and obviously they're easy because they take 20 minutes. So you make a quick oil, you get some herbs, get a little bit of ginger, Pour the oil over those fresh herbs, and then you wanna boil off some ramen noodles. I love to use the brown rice ramen noodles. Add a little soy sauce to the mix, toss it all together, and then I serve it off with green onions on top. They're so good, you guys are gonna love them. Until I switch to the other side, to the other side, I, 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 it's no surprise I turned you in. Butter chicken and homemade naan. My little sister and her baby came over and she wanted me to make this for them. Everybody cleaned their plates. There were no leftovers. This is how I made it. I diced up some chicken thighs. I'm adding plain Greek yogurt, garlic paste, ginger paste, turmeric, garam masala, chili powder, and a little bit of lemon juice. Let this marinate and now we're going to start on our dough for the naan. Mixing warm water with yeast and sugar. Let this sit for 10 minutes and then you can add flour, baking soda, baking powder, olive oil, a little bit of Greek yogurt. Mix this well and then we're gonna let this rise for an hour and a half. In the meantime, I'm melting some ghee in a pan. I'm gonna cook my chicken. Once it is fully cooked, I'm gonna remove this chicken from the pan and then I'm gonna start making my sauce. I'm adding more ghee, diced red onion, garlic paste, ginger paste, a can of diced tomatoes, tomato paste, heavy cream, the same spices, and some cashews. Let this simmer and then I'm gonna add it to my blender and blend until smooth. Once blended, you can re-add your chicken. I'm adding heavy cream and cilantro for garnish. After you've let your dough rise, you can section it out and cook in an ungreased pan. Try this out, guys. Let me know what you think. This is my creamy, cheesy, sun-dried tomato and spinach chicken bake. It's really easy to make. All you have to do is score the chicken breast and coat it in oregano, smoked paprika, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Into a baking tray, add the finely chopped shallot, garlic, spinach, sun-dried tomato, stock powder and cream. Mix it all together, place the chicken on top and sprinkle cheese all over the chicken. Bake in the oven at 180 degrees for 30 minutes. We love it served on my super creamy mashed potatoes. Make this mac and cheese with me. Now, if you can find what's called elbow macaroni, I have searched everywhere for elbow macaroni, and I think it would actually look better than this. Some water, a little bit of 
salt. So the pasta's cooked and it's just been drained. Now we can move on to the sauce. I've just got some salted butter. I'm gonna let that melt. So while that the butter is melting, I'm just gonna add some garlic granules. You can use garlic granules or um, fresh garlic. That's completely up to you. Put a dash of corn flour in, and you can actually use normal flour for this as well. A good stirring. I've just got this double cream from Aldi. I'm just gonna pop some of this in. You can use double cream or heavy cream. Just keep stirring that black pepper. Some people add hot sauce at this point as well, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pop that on the side and then I'm just adding a bit of paprika. I'm gonna add some pasta water, which somehow add some soft cheese this is from aldi as well i'm pretty sure this was like 79p and it's the same price for full fat and it's the same price for non-full fat um we were actually using the full fat one today we've really got to mix that soft cheese in to make sure it's all melted down we don't want any lumps Cheese of choice is mature cheddar, again from Aldi, I've just got the red one, quite like the colour. And just some grated mozzarella, add whatever cheese you want to pop in. We just mix that in and let it all melt. Our pasta. Make sure it's all covered. I mean, some people actually like to eat it like this now at this point, and um, but I, I actually like it with a bit more of a baked cheese crust. I just transfer it into this little baking Pyrex thing. It can bake. A little bit more cheese over the top, just to kind of give it that little cheese cheese crust i like to call it and then from this one so we've got two mac and cheeses out of that and i can freeze some it's quite good actually just pop that in the oven i think i'm gonna let it go in for about 10 to 15 minutes and here they are mm. When I was writing my cookbook, I knew this was one recipe that had to be in it, which is my mom's spaghetti bake, which we've been eating for as long as I can remember. Like growing up, I did not want to go to a restaurant for my birthday. I would always request this. To a pan, you're going to brown up one pound of ground beef and then drain any grease with whatever method that you choose. Then you're going to add one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, a half a cup of water, and one package of spaghetti sauce mix. And once that's all combined, you're going to switch the heat to low and you're just going to let this simmer for 20 minutes, stirring frequently. And while that's simmering, you can cook your pasta. You're going to break a half a pound of spaghetti into thirds and cook according to the package. Then drain and set aside. Then to another pot, you're going to add in two tablespoons of butter. Once it's melted, you're going to whisk in two tablespoons of flour and cook for two minutes. Then you're going to gradually add in one cup of evaporated milk and a half a cup of water. Next, just switch the heat to low and gradually add in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese and a fourth a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And just cook until all the cheese is melted. And to assemble in a 9x13 casserole dish, you're going to add in half of the spaghetti, half of the meat mixture, all of the cheese sauce mixture, the rest of the spaghetti, and then the rest of the meat mixture. And to finish it off, you're going to top with one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Then this goes in a 375 degree oven for 20 minutes. And like I said, this was a staple growing up in our house. And if you enjoyed this recipe, I have a lot more easy recipes in my cookbook that is now
don't feel like cooking dinner tonight, but you're responsible for dinner in your household, same and same. But don't worry, I've got you covered. This is so easy to make. We're gonna make some buffalo chicken wraps. Cook your chicken in some buffalo sauce according to the back of the package of your chicken. When it's done, you wanna cut it up into bite-sized pieces. Heat up your tortilla and then add your buffalo chicken and whatever toppings you want. I did some shredded cheddar cheese, some ranch, of course, lettuce, and then some tomatoes. This was so easy to make and perfect for those nights when you really don't feel like cooking. And let's be honest, who doesn't like a buffalo chicken wrap? I hope you guys enjoy this and make sure you follow me for more really easy recipes.